Hi everyone, this is Teacher Yi here and today we'll continue using sensory detail to improve our writing. So this is part two with a completely new picture and examples to inspire you. Don't worry, we'll do a recap as well. Let me share screen. So this is episode two. All right, so in episode one, we went through how you can include sensory detail to improve your descriptive writing. So we know that descriptive writing is all about describing a person, a place, object, or event in great detail. And what is detail if not what you can see, hear, taste, smell, touch, and feel. So that is what sensory detail is all about. It's a prompt. When you write, you can think about these questions. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What do you taste? What do you touch? To really bring your story to life and allow your readers to be in that experience, to be in that place and time with those characters. All right. So last in the last video, we talked about how there are two ways you can prep for writing. You can brainstorm, which is just listing down anything and everything that comes to your mind. There is no wrong answer. It's all free flow here. It's it's just it's just go crazy with your imagination and your creativity. And then after that, you can mind map, which is organize all of your ideas, your words, phrases, sentences, all of them into, in this case, uh, sensory detail boxes. So what can you see, hear, taste, uh, touch, smell? And that's a great opportunity for you to realize that you might have focused more on one sense and neglected the others. So it's a great time for you to add that into your story. So. The last time we looked at this picture of a classroom, an art classroom with all these students doing different things. And so you might want to check that video out. But for today, we'll look at a situation in a canteen during recess or a cafeteria, wherever you are, right? In the world, it might differ. So this is just a plain picture. It's not even recess here. So I want you to close your eyes and picture your canteen with the hustle and bustle of recess, like all the students, all the vendors, all the food, because that's a really rich environment, right? With all of your senses participating, you know, you can see, smell, taste, touch, hear things, right? And so again, we'll do all these activities, we'll brainstorm, we'll mind map, and then We'll go through each of the senses one by one. Again, I want you to have a piece of paper or pencils or even your note app on your phone open so we can practice as we go along. So it's the same. So of course, pause the video and then brainstorm. Take five minutes, take 10 minutes and then play the video again. I will always have a 30 second buffer on my end. So don't worry, just pause the video, do what you have to do and then play it back. OK, now let's start off here. So think about recess time. And first up, we are going to brainstorm. So yes, close your eyes and think about your school canteen during recess time. Brainstorm all the words that come to your mind when you think about your school canteen. Use the picture provided to guide you. Yes, but it's only a guide. You can add in as much detail as you want. You can do 20, 30, 40 answers right now. So take five minutes or 10 minutes and then come back. You may begin.
All right, let's move along. Now that you've taken your time to brainstorm your list about recess time, let's get into organizing your ideas. So now place the words in a sensory detail mind map. Brainstorm more words where appropriate. OK, so now I want you to look at your list and then I want you to see which one incites the sense of sight, which one is about the sense of smell. I want you to organize them. Uh, take five minutes or 10 minutes again. It's up to your pace and process. It's all good. On my end, I'm going to give you a 30 second buffer and your time starts now. All right, I hope you've taken your time and you have all your ideas. On my end, I'll give you some of what I wrote down as well, just to inspire you. So for sight, I've looked into my mind, into what recess time and what my canteen looks like. Tables, tiles, fans, counters, students. So those are what I can see sound, cooking utensils, students laughter, students noisy chatter, bell ringing, fans whirring. OK, what I can smell. See, I'm Malaysian, so we're going to go with all those amazing Malaysian dishes. So we have nasi lemak, which is rice with this pandan fragrance and then fried chicken smells savory. Ice lemon tea smells citrusy, sour smells, sweaty clothes, perfume. OK, yes, you really want to get down to what food smells like or what people smell like, right? Taste sweet ice cream, sweet quick lapis, sour pineapple, spicy sambal, crispy chicken. And touch breeze on hair. Table is sticky with food stains, hands soapy and wet. Soft cotton uniform, slippery floor. OK, so these are some of what I've written down in my mind map. Now let's look into each of our senses in more detail. Wait, let me pull this down. OK, let's refresh. What does sense of sight entail? So Look at this note over here to describe physical attributes such as color, size, shape, lightness and darkness, shadows and shade. And when it comes to appearances, you can look at what someone is wearing, their hair, their skin tone, their shoes, their mannerisms, how they laugh, how they walk. There are so many things that are interesting and that differentiates us and makes us unique. So you can look into that. OK, so an example here would be. Tables shiny and sleek plastic blue long rectangular tables neatly arranged side by side in vertical rows. So here's your time to shine in terms of using your wide vocabulary, your adjectives, adverbs, verbs, right? And feel free to scour the Internet the internet is your best friend. There are lists on websites on all these senses and words that you can use for them. You can use the dictionary, the thesaurus, you can find synonyms and more specific words as well. Feel free to use the resources at your disposal. So during an exam, you have it all in here. OK, so I want you to take five or ten minutes just to Write some sentences or phrases or bullet points just to give more details to what you can see. OK, so you can pick a particular object or person and brainstorm more details that you can see about them. OK, I'll give you a 30 second buffer, but you pause, take your time and then come back. Start.
All right. Let's look at some of my ideas. So teacher given examples. OK. Let me just pull this up. OK, we have tables, shiny and sleek, plastic blue, long rectangular tables neatly arranged side by side in vertical rows. Ceiling. The ceilings are high up with multiple evenly spaced fans and lights lining its chalky and dusty white plaster. Floors. The grey ceramic tiled floor interspersed with lines of dark blue tiles are clean and spotless. Students. Students wearing their light blue and white pinafores and baju kurong waiting in line to buy the canteen food. Students sitting haphazardly on the long benches, some with their legs neatly tucked underneath the table, with some do the opposite and bend their bodies at awkward angles to get to their food. Okay, so yes, you can use a thesaurus, you can use other websites that have a lot of ideas, a lot of examples. So I hope these examples inspire you to give more detail into what you can see. Again, you want to strike a, by, a balance, not too much and not too little. OK, so next let's get to the sense of hearing. So what's the tip here? To describe attributes of sound such as duration, tone, volume, pace, pitch, timber and overall effect, right? So the sounds you hear around you, it could be objects clanging on each other. It could be people's voices. Some of us are really loud and some of us are really quiet. Some of us talk really slowly and some of us talk really quickly, right? And some of us talk in a really high pitch and some of us talk in a really low pitch, right? There's so many different sounds around you as well. Animals, objects, you name it, right? So I want you to again take five to ten minutes and really give more detail to what you can hear. An example here is students laughter. It could be loud, deafening and booming, right? OK, so you go ahead, pick a particular object or person and brainstorm more details that you can hear about them. Start. All right, let's get to my teacher given examples so I can inspire you if you're experiencing writer's block. OK, so students laughter, loud, deafening, booming, high pitched, ear piercing, ringing, noisy, rowdy, chattering. Students whispering, low voice, hush tone, mummering. Sound of cooking utensils clinging and clanging as food is being prepared. The powerful hissing sound of water evaporating on the hot stove. The sound of students loudly dragging their feet on the floor of the canteen. The new their new shoe is sometimes squeaking. The fans roaring loudly in an uneven pace. The shrill recess bell ringing the signal going back to class. OK, so those are some sounds that can help you out here. All right, now let's go to a different sense. Yeah, you really you want to create a little movie in your readers heads, right? When they're reading like in movies or TV shows that you watch, you know, someone's putting all the sound effects into place and the background music. So you want to be able to express that in words so your characters feel like they're watching that show in their heads. OK, next one. What can you smell? Slide to show. OK. So in terms of smell, think about the sense that people, objects or places have. Right. 
again, you want to stick to like food has a particular smell, perfume, sweat, you know, that kind of thing. So what can you smell? You can pick a particular object or person and brainstorm more related smells. So an example here, this is a classic Malaysian dish, the nasi lemak, so aromatic rice with a coconut and pandan fragrance. So you can think of the ingredients of the food that is in play. So maybe those have really specific smells that you can really pull from, right? That's a tip for you. Okay, you can start now. All right. OK, let's see some of my examples. To inspire you. OK, so again, with the nasi lemak, aromatic rice with the coconut and pandan fragrance, savory smelling anchovy sambal, pepper tickling your nose. The savory and greasy smell of fried chicken lingers in the air. Ice lemon tea with its fresh citrus fragrance. Students wearing PE uniforms of shirts and long pants who had just come after playing outside in the sun smelled sour with sweat. A student's perfume smelled like roses and mint, refreshing and pleasant, right? So you really want to be thinking about the smells that you have. And those are some examples for you to add into your database. You can just pull out when you're writing your stories or when you're doing your exams. OK. Next one, sense of taste. The luckiest canteens are all about food, so we can really. Be creative here, so taste, you know, it's all your sweet, sour. What else? Salty, savory, you know, your typical taste bud taste. You can pick a particular food and brainstorm more details related to its taste. For example, salty and spicy fish sambal always served warm. Hmm, you can even talk about temperature, I suppose, as well. OK, go ahead, take your time and come back when you're ready. All right, welcome back. Let's look at some of my examples. Examples. OK, a lot of Malaysian food here. You can Google them. I'll try to explain them uh, with details, but you can always Google them for more information. Always check them out, try them out. They're delicious. OK, for example, Chewy onde onde coated in coconut shavings explode with sweet brown sugar flavoring in your mouth. Cold and sweet tasting ice cream Malaysia with flavors like corn, milo, and bandung were sold in the cafeteria. The chopped up mixed fruits sold in plastic bags were full of flavor, sour pineapples, and sweet pears. Salty and spicy fish sambal always served warm. Fried chicken tasted crispy and crunchy, the meat greasy and succulent. Some examples right there. OK, think about the food. Think about what are their tastes. All right, so that's about the sense of taste. Now let's practice the sense of touch. OK, so sense of touch is all about describing texture of how something feels when touched or eaten. Right, 
all our walls, our floors, our tables, all of them have different textures. So you can pick particular things or people and brainstorm more details to textures relating to them. For example, gliding your hand on the sleek and slippery plastic table, it's sticky at places where food stains were left. Okay, so think about everything you can touch and how they feel. Okay, go ahead, come back when you're ready. Right, welcome back. Let's look at some of my examples. Let's see. Okay, for example, the warmth of the morning sun on your skin and the cool breeze ruffling through your hair. Gliding your hand on the sleek and slippery plastic table, it's sticky at places where food stains were left. Students leaving the sink, wiping their wet hands on the coarse cotton of their school uniforms. PE uniforms drenched in sweat feel itchy and scratchy on the skin. Students eating nasi lemak with their hands, the rice soft and malleable in their fingers, mixing with the rougher sambal, making their hands crinkly with moisture. Yeah, so you can really go in detail here, okay, and create really nice sentences with a sense of touch as well. Okay, our next one, our last one, it's not necessarily a physical sense, it's more in your heart, it's about what you feel, so you can just put that in, add that in. So what do you feel during recess time, right? It's all about emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, excitement, relaxed. Okay, so how do you feel? You can pick a particular object or person and brainstorm more details about how they make you feel. Okay, for example, the canteen makes me happy as I get to rest, joke with my friends, and eat good food during recess. Okay, so you take your time, brainstorm a few sentences about what recess time makes you feel, what your characters are feeling, and then come back here for some examples from me. All right, let's look at some of my examples about how you feel, how you feel. The canteen makes me happy as I get to rest, joke with my friends and eat good food during recess. Recess time makes me feel panicky as it is crowded with noisy students. I am always relieved and excited for recess as I get to rest my mind from absorbing so much information during class. I feel sad during recess as I am a prefect and I have to eat quickly and carry out my responsibilities. I feel energetic and refreshed after recess as I am full and can focus on my classes. All right. So think about your experiences with recess and what you felt, or what your friends felt, and then create some sentences. Now, as per usual, I'm going to show you the difference between having sensory detail in your writing versus not having any. So text one doesn't have much of it, right? It's pretty simple, pretty minimal. Recess time is exciting. The canteen is always crowded and noisy with students in their school uniforms. The students talk to their friends while waiting in line or sitting on the benches. I buy food and a drink and sit at my table. The food is delicious. Then I wash my hands and go back to class. 
article is very simple, not much details. So if you want a longer piece of writing, you want a full descriptive essay, you can really think about your sensory detail. And then you can create something like this. Don, let me put it up so you can see it clearer. I'm always excited to go to the canteen during recess as I get to rest, banter with my buddies and eat delicious food. The canteen at recess is always crowded with noisy students chattering away while waiting in line or sitting haphazardly on the long, shiny and sleek rectangular tables. The students wear light blue pinafores with white collared shirts, baju kurong or sports t-shirts and black pants. The powerful hissing of fire on the stove and the sound of walks clinging and clanging can be heard over the sound of laughter and students shouting their orders. I bought a pack of nasi lemak wrapped in banana leaf and a glass of lemon iced tea. Then I scan the busy canteen for an empty spot and sit at the end of a table, swinging my legs underneath it while impatiently unraveling the banana leaf. I smell the aromatic rice with its coconut and pandan fragrance and the savory anchovy sambal pepper tickling my nose. I also smell the fresh citrus fragrance of my drink and sip it eagerly. I start eating the nasi lemak with my hands, the rice soft and malleable in my fingers, mixing with the rougher sambal, making my hands crinkly with moisture. The food is spicy, so I take turns eating and then drinking the sweet tea interchangeably. Then I wash my hands in the sink with soapy water and then wipe them dry on my coarse pin cotton pinafore. Right after, I hear the familiar strill and high-pitched ringing of the school bell, signaling the end of recess. Students line up in rows of two before dragging their feet solemnly back to class. So that's much more evocative of the experience of being in a canteen during recess, right? So. Of course, this has so much detail, so you want to, again, find the balance, not too little details, not too much details, right? Somewhere in the middle. So I challenge you to, from all your brainstorming and all the sentences and phrases you have in your notes right now, to create your own paragraph that is unique to you, that you can use in your stories, in your essays, and it will come in handy. Good writing is handy in all facets of your life. So. So that's all for today and tune in for more content on writing strategies. Goodbye.